You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring scripture with Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom and Dr. Frederick J. Long. Welcome and enjoy. Aloha, I'm Michael Halcom here, and this is another episode of Three Things, a mini podcast in the Proof Text podcast series. So uh, here's three things that uh, I'm thinking about. One is uh, somebody that you must read, an older theologian that's uh, been also very influential on me. His name is Andrew Murray. He was a South African theologian, uh, author, and pastor, and he's uh, he wrote a lot. Um, uh, his his work, Absolute Surrender, uh, the Deeper Christian Life, Dying to Self. Um, the Master's Indwelling, The Prayer Life, the School of Obedience, that's an incredible book. Uh, Thy Will Be Done, another incredible book. With Christ in the School of Prayer, Working for God. Uh, these are all amazing. Abide in Christ. Yeah, so check out Andrew Murray. Lived uh, in the early 1800s up to the early 1900s. Um, so check out Andrew Murray. Something else I'm thinking of with uh, December now uh well advent christmas on the horizon the so-called wise men we read about this in uh chapter two of matthew's gospel but just like to remind everyone these are not described as wise men in the text they're also not described as kings and they're not even described as men for all we know, there could have been women, and there's not uh, no no uh, reference to there only being three of them. So all we get in Matthew chapter 2 is the word magu. In Greek, magu is the plural form, magi. That's it. We're not told how many. We're not told that they're wise. We're not told that they're dumb. We're not told that they're kings. We're not told that they're men or women. Could be men and women. Magu. It's a, a grammatically speaking, it's a masculine term, but um, the masculine plural use could also include uh, females in a group, just like anthropu or something like that. People. Right? It doesn't always have to be males, even though it's grammatically masculine. So we could have had fifty magu. We could have had, uh, I don't know, um, twenty-five. Uh, Magu that, you know, a bunch of them were men, a bunch of them were women. We don't know. The three comes from the three gifts that were brought, but multiple people could have, uh, you know, contributed to those gifts. Those gifts. And uh, yeah, so there's a different word for wise people or wise men. Sophie is what would have been used if the connection was uh, wise or translation was wise. All right, so... This, uh, when you, when you hear this part of the story, magu, magi, that's correct. That's the right way to, to translate it and say it. Um, yeah, magi were often engaged in reading the skies and stars and planetary phenomena and things like that. Um, another thing that I've been thinking about is just student encouragement. Uh, this, this, <laughs> all encouragement goes a long way, but when you're a teacher, a professor, uh, and you get a little bit of encouragement from your students. Ah, oh, man, it's so refreshing. And it, it just, um, yeah, it can just reinvigorate. So if you're a student out there listening, I just encourage you drop your professor or professors a line of encouragement. Thank them. Something like that. Tell them something you appreciated, something you learned. Trust me, it'll go a long way. Uh, recently I had a, I had a student write this note. Aloha, doctor. Today's class was amazing. I really enjoyed the intro to your sermon prep system and you taking the time to walk us through it. It was a blessing. I've been studying Abraham off and on for months because of the similarities with where we are on our journey of leaving everything and moving five months ago. I'm very thankful our God talks and cares about us enough to want to engage with us in the good fight of faith. So that was just a a great email I received, super encouraging and just gave me another little boost mid-semester to keep going. So 
Yeah, those are three things that I'm thinking about. I hope you find them thought provoking. Looking for creative ways to launch your biblical language studies to the next level? We here at Glosa House create resources with you in mind. We've created a stock of innovative and cutting edge audio, video, digital, and print resources to help you reach your language goals. Visit glosahouse.com to find what you've been looking for. Glosa House, language resources for the global community.